Hey there, new IDs. It's time for another mini episode. Last week, we talked about the epic L&D face-off between instructional designers and e-learning developers. This week, we're talking about the theory, process, and skills that'll help you succeed in your first ID position. But before we get to that, here's a reminder that this podcast serves as a primer that presents the most basic elements of instructional design. Each episode is going to build upon the last one to help give you a better understanding of the career part of instructional design. So it's up to you to dig deeper into each topic, to be motivated to absorb more on your own time, and to really fall in love with that process of discovery, failure, and even frustration. So let's get started. Welcome back to I'm New Here, a podcast for new instructional designers and e-learning developers. New episodes are uploaded every Monday. Have a question you want answered on the show? Send an email to thenewhereshow at gmail.com. So today's topic is a big one. In fact, I could probably split theory, skills, process into their own episodes And possibly down the line, I'll do that. But for this conversation, let's take a big picture look at the type of knowledge, skills, and processes that will help you find a job and keep it. Instructional design covers a lot of disciplines, including user experience, visual design, pedagogy, psychology, computer science. I could go on and on. Because of this, people are really worried about what they need to learn first in order to feel comfortable calling themselves an instructional designer. Well, I'm here to tell you to stop worrying and start doing, especially after this episode, you won't have any other excuse to be wishy-washy about where to start. Let's start with theory. To be an effective instructional designer, you need to understand learning theory or the cognitive, emotional, and environmental influences as well as prior experience that really play a part in how understanding, or a person's worldview is acquired or changed, and how knowledge and skills are retained. Corporate learning and development will require that you understand adult learning theory specifically, for obvious reasons. There's not really kids, children working in the workplace with us. Labor laws keep that from happening. In 1984, Malcolm Knowles suggested four principles that are applied to adult learning. One, Adults need to be involved in the planning and evaluation of their instruction. Two, experience, including mistakes, provides the basis for these learning activities. Three, adults are most interested in learning subjects that have immediate relevance and impact to their job or personal life. And four, adult learning is problem-centered rather than content-oriented. From these principles, we can identify specific learning theories that support them and apply them to whatever learning intervention we're creating. An important part of becoming an ID is determining which theory works best for the outcome we desire. Some of the main theories, principles, and methodologies you'll hear referenced in the corporate space include Bloom's Taxonomy, the Taxonomy of Significant Learning, Gagne's Nine Events, Kirkpatrick's four levels of evaluation and action mapping, and there are a lot more. I don't have time in this podcast to get into specifics, but you're in luck because there are plenty of other L&D podcasts getting into theory and all that good stuff. I'll be sure to link some of my favorites in the show notes, which you can find on my website. By the way, I just want to make it clear that theory and model are two terms people use interchangeably but they don't really mean the same thing. A theory is aimed at a generalized statement aimed at explaining a phenomenon, so how adults learn. And a model, on the other hand, is a purposeful representation of that reality. Another way to link the two and point out differences is that a model is used to describe an application of a theory for a particular case. So you can go to school to learn more about these theories. You could enroll in a certificate program or you could teach yourself, but however you choose to go about it, this is the foundation you need. And it'll also be one of the first things you're asked about in an instructional design interview. The next thing you'll be asked about is your process for training design, meaning how do you approach the problem and solve it? How do you manage the project? Where do you start? 
What are the steps you're taking to perform instructional design? Think back to when I asked you to look up job positions on Indeed back in episode two. You may have seen some jobs asking if you're familiar with the ADDIE framework, right? ADDIE stands for Analysis, Design, Develop, Implement, and Evaluate. And it's a really great framework to start with when you're learning instructional design. As you get more advanced, you may find yourself implementing other methods that work better for you, but we all got to start somewhere. Your ID process should include a needs or gap analysis to identify the problem or find out if there even is a problem. Sometimes there might not be. An analysis of your audience or learner. It may also include a task analysis if you're teaching a skill. And it should include the writing of learning objectives. It'll include determining how training will be delivered, meaning what method is the learning going to get to your audience. And finally, the mapping out of the structure of the learning experience. Okay, so far we talked about theory and process as I promised. Now here's a bridge to the next topic. I mentioned the writing of learning objectives earlier, and that should be a part of your process, but I think it really does take a certain amount of skill to write them because it's a foundational task for any instructional designer. Learning objectives outline exactly what you intend for participants to achieve by the end of your learning experience. I'm definitely going to do a separate episode on just learning objectives because like I said, writing good ones takes skill and they're foundational to everything you do because everything you do has to be in alignment with those objectives. My former professor, shout out to Dr. Waite, used to drive this home to us in every single class. Your learning experience has to be in alignment with whatever you want your audience to achieve by the end of the course. But like I said, more on that in a future episode, or I'll keep going on and on all about it. So in addition to the skill of crafting learning objectives, you need some other skills to get you started as an ID. But before I list those off and start scaring you with this long list of skills, let's have a come to Jesus moment. First, you cannot wait to be perfect at these things before going out there and getting your feet wet. Remember at the beginning of the episode when I said you better get real comfortable with frustration and even failure? Well, here's where that comes in handy. Learning new skills is messy and it's uncomfortable. And when I try to encourage people to just get started, there's this common fear of not being good enough. And you know what? You're not. You're not going to be perfect. And your desire to be perfect is what's keeping you from learning something new. So instead of fretting about where to start or if you'll be good enough or if you can even show people what you've created, just get started. Okay, now to the list. I'll start with the basic skills you need to succeed at an entry level ID job. Project management skills for finishing an assignment on time, on budget and on scope. You'll need basic visual design and composition skills for creating aesthetically pleasing learning experiences. Consulting skills for learning to communicate with subject matter experts and internal clients basic video editing skills, and basic authoring tool skills. So knowing how to pick a tool, learning how to use it for real, not just how to open a template file. Advanced skills would include coding, animation, UX design, things that require a little higher level understanding. When we put everything together I mentioned here today, knowledge of adult learning theory, principles and frameworks, a solid command of the ID process and basic skills in project management, visual design, learning technologies, you should be able to confidently call yourself an instructional designer without worrying about whether or not you're ready to do that. But first, you need a plan for how to attack all of this. Here's how I would do it. I would read a research-based book about instruction and adult learning. Then I'd start thinking about the kind of learning and development professional I want to be. Then I would research formal training like a master's program versus online certificate programs I could get, like Robin Sargent's Idle Courses. You can find a link to that in my show notes. And then I would decide what's best for me to get the experience and knowledge I need to move forward. Lastly, I'd write down three skills from the list I mentioned before that you want to improve upon or learn about in the next three months and start working on them today. In the next few episodes, I'll talk more about preparing yourself for your first role, including how to make an upskilling plan, 
defining your ID philosophy, building a portfolio, and a ready-to-go toolkit. Until then, check out these resources to help you get started. If you want to get nerdy about instructional design, you totally can. Here are some authors and books to help you do that. There's basically anything by Ruth Clark. She has a lot of research-based books. David Merrill's First Principle of Instruction. Then there's some guidelines for performance consulting that'll really help you understand how to communicate to internal stakeholders and external stakeholders. There are a lot of other books and tools. I actually have a store on my website where you can shop for some of these things to start outfitting your ID toolkit. Just go to nylalxd.com slash shop. This week's homework assignment is to list out your four-step plan to getting ready for a job. You can use the framework I just gave you or create your own. Thanks for listening to I'm New Here. If you like the show and want to know more, check out nylalxd.com slash I'm New Here. I've got show notes for you there, links to everything I talked about in the episode and more. I know, I know you guys, I am still not on iTunes. It is not for the lack of trying. I'll update you the second Apple allows me through its pearly gates. Until then, I'd love some feedback on what you'd like to see out of the show. I love feedback. I'm also all over socials, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook is Nyla LXD. And I'm on LinkedIn too, just search Nyla Spooner. One last thing. Thanks to everyone who submitted questions already. I decided to do a special monthly episode where I just answer questions. That way I have more time to dedicate to them. If you want your question included, email thenewhereshow at gmail.com. See you next week.